I think nighttime exterior shots are some of the most vastly different looking lighting setups that you can do in cinematography. You've got overhead softbox moonlight type lights or big hard backlights, something like Tarantino might do. Then there's light motivated by sources in the shot like buildings or street lamps or things like that. Or there's some form of day for night. And if you don't know what day for night is, it's basically shooting in the daytime to make it look like night. But day for night is definitely the most different looking one out of all of them, I think, from some really good versions of it to, you know, some absolute fucking shockers, really. <laughs> so this technique's been done for a pretty long time. And if you look at a lot of older movies, like ones from David Lean, you'll see all the night shots are done in the day and they've just underexposed it a little bit and then added a bit of a blue tint and then voila, you've got nighttime. So to this day, some of the time, it's still done in this way, in this sort of version. It's just, they have a bit better technology now to combine night elements and day elements together to make it look a bit more convincing. If you're shooting really wide shots at nighttime, you know, motivated by moonlight, either that's some big lights really far away, like how Roger Deakins does it on True Grit. And this example is actually shot at nighttime. You've got this wide shot here, and then he's put a large amount of lights on this ridge shining down on the scene, but it's still sort of contained in this small area using the hills around it to block out the areas that you wouldn't be able to light. You wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to throw lights all the way off in the distance. So this hill here is blocking the need to light that far. And then the camera's also looking down, so we're not seeing the sky either. And you see the same thing in the movie Django as well. In this, they've got a big top light above and a few other lights around the place. But a lot of the time, they're shooting down into this valley and, and these hills around here are containing the scene. So you don't have to light way off in the distance because that would be almost impossible really. So there's those versions and ways of doing it. Or the other option is to just use the sun. I saw this shot recently in a TV show called The Sinner, which was a day for night shot. And it was, pretty rough, but you can never really blame the filmmakers too much. It's not like they set out to make a bad looking shot. It's usually the scenario they put in with the budget and time that they've got to do it. So the scene starts out, shots walking through this small town at night, the lights motivated by the practical lights around them, as you can see, then these two people walk deeper into the woods and it just changes to day for night with this sort of blue wash of light all over them. A few other things happen in the story. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but then it's a few hours later in the story and boats and other vehicles have arrived and now we're back to shooting at night with motivated light. But again, you can't really blame the filmmakers. I imagine in the script, it would have said, you know, we have these people in the middle of the woods walking through them at night. And then the schedule, we also have a hundred other shots that we need to get. And the filmmakers would just be like, well, how the fuck are we gonna do all this? We just have to do it in the daytime and use the sun. But in recent years on movies that have a bit more time and budget, I've been seeing people combining day and night elements together. Like on the Jordan Peele movie, No. Lots of the shots are these big wide shots set at night, but they're using the sun. I read online they used two cameras rigged together shooting through a prism. One was an IMAX camera shooting normally, and the other was an Alexa 65 shooting infrared, and then in post, they'll blend the two together. Which just sounds like someone said, what's the most expensive thing you've ever wanted to do? Then I'm sure they also got plates and different versions at nighttime of the lights and the houses and sort of comp those in. And it was a combination of a lot of different elements together. And I remember a few years ago hearing and seeing Steve Yedlin talk about this on Knives Out. Uh, I'm always talking about Steve Yedlin, fucking fanboy here. A lot of the wide exterior shots were done with a combination of day and night shots, which gives this sort of unusual image that you can't really get by just shooting at nighttime and lighting the place up. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your personal or professional website online. If you do any sort of business online, you can't really get by without having a website. So whether you want to run an online store or if you're a photographer or a cinematographer like me and you just want to show your portfolio of work, everything is built into the site with easy to use drag and drop templates to fit any need. If you want to build a website, you can start a free trial at squarespace.com slash lewispotts to get 10% off the first purchase. 
there's a bunch of scenes around the house that are either dusk for night or they're visual effects composite of day for night and night for night, or they're dusk for night with some visual effects elements. You know, on the one hand, you see all the the electric light and the, and the, and the light in the house that's, you know, that actually has an effect, which if you just shot day for night and you turn a light bulb on, obviously that's not going to have any effect. And in the example, it's got Chris going through the gate and up to the house and you see elements of the porch, him, and we can see the front lawn. Uh, and but but it's dark. And but I also know that um, I want the top of the house to be dark against a lit sky uh, instead of front lit. Um, but usually in movies, you know, if you actually shoot at night, what you see is front lit trees against a black sky, not black trees against a dimly lit sky. So this was just a way that uh, that I came up with to blend these in different ways. But yeah, we have all these these composites where you know we would shoot the multiple elements and then and then I put them together in my computer in exactly that that way I wanted. I've never done this before and I've always wanted to try it. So let's give it a go. Okay, so I'm going to try and test this day for night shot out the front here using both day and night elements. I'm going to get this daytime shot here now and then I'll mark the position of the camera and then we'll come back at night time and get the night plate version. So I'm trying to get that street lamp in the shot because I think at night time that's going to look pretty cool and that'll sell it a bit more. All right, so now we're back out here. It's, um, I don't know, it's late, it's fucking dark obviously. <laughs> and I put the camera in the same spot that it was in before. And then now I'm going to get the plate version of the nighttime shot. And I've just turned on the house lights, nothing else. That's all that's on. And the good thing about this monitor here is that I can overlay the previous image at 50% opacity to line up the shot. Also shooting at 360 shutter to get an extra stop of light. All right, now we're in Resolve and this is how it turned out. I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Is that good? Well, this is the $40 million budget Knives Out version and this is mine. So this took me a little while longer to work out than how fast it's probably going to go by in this video, but I've got four layers. This base layer at the bottom is just the house at night with the lights on. Then this next one above that is just another version of the house at night with this other light on. Then I've used the lighten in the composite mode to blend them together. The next layer here is the sky, which I've just brought the exposure all the way down, made it a little bit blue, reduced some of the saturation, then also use the lighten effect in the composite mode. Then this last layer here is just the sun on the house, which I've just cut out this front part of the house and just used this bit. I've done the same thing as the sky, just brought the exposure way down, made it a little bit blue, and then used the lighten effect. Then just line them up on top of each other. All right, achievement unlocked. That's it. 